بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم in the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى most gracious most merciful الحمد لله all praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه جمعين his household his companions we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless them to bless every single one of us to grant us goodness to open the doors of ease for every one of us to fulfill all our needs to grant us ease through all our difficulties and to bless us during this beautiful upcoming month of Ramadan Amin my brothers and sisters we all know <clears throat> that Ramadan is around the corner am I right which corner subhanallah we all know that Ramadan is around the corner and we all want the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every one of us would like to achieve forgiveness closeness to Allah we want the tranquility the peace that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising I promise you my brothers and sisters we have goodness in our hearts we have goodness within our systems it's just that sometimes shaitan the devil the accursed makes us forget that there is a lot of goodness within us and we become overpowered at times by the evil force and this is why reminders of this nature are extremely important reminders of this nature are extremely important because they should make us feel like yes indeed we are good people I have goodness in me I'm convinced about it and I'm convinced that every one of you there is some good within you that we need to try and enhance we need to try and develop and grow we, and that is what life is all about the growth of the goodness the diminishing of the evil and the living of this beautiful life in a way that as we pass through its days its months its years we become closer to the Almighty so that when we pass away we're actually very very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the closest we ever were so I'm excited about this beautiful month are you mashallah so I guess that excitement must be meaning the freezers are all full mashallah you know all the pies and everything else is ready alhamdulillah subhanallah but I don't know if that excitement translates into something deeper than just the preparation for the food and by the way something strange is when we speak to those who don't know much about Islam and we say this is the month of Ramadan and they say oh yeah Ramadan I know Ramadan Ramadan was the Egyptian brother living next door you know <laughs> but no to be honest we would explain to them it's the month where we don't eat if they were to come into our kitchens and witness what goes on they'd probably think no 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 I think you're mistaken it's the month where you do eat actually <laughs> subhanallah isn't that a reality wallahi it's facts we burden ourselves with so much I know in my part of the world perhaps here too where people ask for freezers especially just before Ramadan because they don't have enough space in their own freezers so they hire it out or for example they buy a new one and they need to fill it with food well I don't want to comment about it it's not haram it's actually okay it's permissible it's part of the gift of Allah because the hadith says a person who fasts has two points of happiness one is when he opens his fast and two is when he meets with his Rabb and the opening of the fast refers to two things one is on a daily basis when you put something in your mouth at the end of the fast the feeling is just so beautiful so good mashallah you know the most unhealthy let me start with the other one the healthiest thing you can put in your mouth is a date remember I said put in your mouth not uh, go out with but I'm talking about the healthiest thing you can put in your mouth is a date subhanallah it is filled with fiber with iron with so much more you know and it's something that is a gift from Allah if you were to put in your mouth a date at the time of the opening of the fast I promise you not only would it be healthy but 
you would achieve a spirituality by fulfilling the sunnah and the practice of Muhammad peace be upon him. And it's not like a race. The adhan of Maghrib goes and the next thing is we all try and you know get as much food as we call in Ramadan subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. Make it a Ramadan with the difference. Be civilized, be decent. I know I'm speaking here in Europe and subhanallah here up north in Manchester the fasts are even longer than London. Am I right? Wow, that was a quick yes. Subhanallah, you've worked it out as well, right? Subhanallah, I did work it out too. And that's why at the end of Ramadan, I want to come and spend the day of Eid, mashallah, with my family and friends, perhaps in the park in, at the Valentine Park in London, perhaps inshallah. And I was looking at when to come. And I'm thinking perhaps I'll come in time for the 27th, because the 27th, as you know, it's one of the possibilities of uh, the night of decree. But we need to start planning from now. What are we going to be doing? Where are we going to be? Where are we going to go for Taraweeh, etc., etc.? The point I was raising is the fasts are a little bit longer. So the, the sweetness of that date as, sorry, the date, date. The sweetness of that tamr, okay, that you're going to be putting into your mouth, subhanallah, is such, my brothers and sisters, that the dua you make at that juncture, Allah says, it is for you. That point, what is the dua you're going to make? Oh Allah, grant me forgiveness. Oh Allah, accept this fast from me. Oh Allah, open my doors. Oh Allah, help my brothers and sisters across the globe who are suffering. I pause for a moment. My brothers and sisters, every day of Ramadan, undertake from now at the time of iftar, we are going to pray for those who are suffering across the globe. Is that a deal? Inshallah. It's the minimum you could do. We are going to reach out. Subhanallah. Look at what happened. Do you know what just happened? Didn't we just say, oh Allah, help those who are suffering across the globe? I was struggling with the heat. As I said that, and some must have said, Ameen, this, this, this fan actually came on the air conditioned and I could feel it. Subhanallah, it's amazing. Instant, instant response to a dua. Amazing. So my brothers and sisters, we must promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the dua, the supplication we're going to make is not going to be selfish. Not just for me. It's not me, myself and I. No, it's about the others as well. We're, we have a family, we have a community, we have an ummah, and we have humanity at large. We need to pray. We need to pray hard. We are taught that when you pray for others, the angels pray for you in the same way. When you ask goodness for someone, that goodness is being asked for you. Become in a habit of making a good dua rather than a dua of destruction. Because if you make a dua for destruction for someone else, the evil effect of that dua might just rebound onto you. Remember that. It's a reality. If they don't deserve it, it's going to come back to you. So try to get out of this habit of making dua for destruction and evil for others. Oh Allah, break that person, destroy this person, damage that person. I don't even know what words people use in their dua. We rather say, oh Allah, soften their hearts. Oh Allah, open their doors. Oh Allah, help them. Oh Allah, grant them goodness. Oh Allah, make them pure, etc. So we're making ourselves pure as well as a result. So we have a long fast, mashallah, tabarakallah. And the healthiest thing you could put in your mouth is a date. The most unhealthy thing that you could put in your mouth is... I'm hearing people saying samosas, fries. I didn't say anything. I haven't even said it. I just said is. And I left the blank. So you filled it, subhanallah, with your own words. But what are you going to be having more of? The healthy or the unhealthy? The unhealthy. Unfortunately, why? Because it's tasty. Okay, that's a very, very interesting observation. We would love our pies and our fries and our savories and what we've prepared. You know, back at home, my wife sent me a picture on WhatsApp of one of her friends, the freezer, is so beautifully organized with tubs, subhanallah. Each tub says day one, day two, day three, day four. And I'm thinking this is supposed to be the dhikr of Allah and the plan of what you're going to do to gain closeness to Allah. And here we have day four. And these are, I actually have it on my phone. These are tubs. In them there is food. Subhanallah, you can actually see. It's plastic, you can see through. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, it's not haram, but... Look, my brothers and sisters, something very important. Are we not all becoming more health conscious? 
I want an answer. We're becoming more health conscious. As time passes, people are talking of organic. People are talking of this, that, everything else. I told you the most unhealthy. Everyone knows already. Too much oil, too much this, too much that. Unhealthy. Cholesterol, what have you. Carbs. Everyone wants to limit what they're having. Because we all want a figure. We all want a body that looks good. We all want, subhanallah, to feel healthy. We all want goodness, etc., etc. But I want to tell you something. We are so concerned about this health of ours and the way we look that we go out to spend hours in a gym, 45 minutes to two hours a day. We will sweat. We will struggle. We are dedicated. We will not want to miss at all. We make sure we stay away from certain foods just because you want to look good. Just because you want to get rid of something called a love handle, you know. That's why there's so little of love nowadays because those handles are missing, by the way. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. Okay, I'm just covering myself, alhamdulillah. <laughs> so, my brothers and sisters, it's a reality. People make an effort. They are dedicated. You're offering them something. They tell you, I won't eat because it's not healthy. I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, if we had a shape spiritually, I wonder whether we would like to look at ourselves in the mirror. That's the type of shape we would be. The most unhealthy things we do for our spirituality. We are never at the spiritual gym. And by the way, going up and down in Salah is not the gym. It's the quality of it. It's the way you pray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires a minimum. That's a fact. The farad and what is compulsory, I cannot decrease that for you. But what I do know is the quality of it is more important than anything else because when I obey Allah, I'm doing it for my benefit, not for His. So I want to discuss this issue of dedication during the month of Ramadan. In the same way, we are dedicated to ensuring that, you know, our health, inshallah, is going to be good. And we'd like to eat low GI, that which is beneficial. The fast going to be long. One of my friends here, seated here today, I'm sorry to, well, it's not an embarrassment, but to mention this. He gave me a box of chocolates, okay? You know what it says? From the USA, the Ramadan bar. Have you seen it? Subhanallah. <laughs> You know what it says in there? Subhanallah. The fasts that last. Subhanallah. You put it in your mouth, you eat it. It's supposed to last a long, long time. It's a Ramadan bar. Well, I'm happy to have received that. But I want to tell you the effort we're making to ensure that the food is correct is only a small percentage. It's supposed to be a small percentage. More than that, I need to change my life. When you would like people to look at you, to turn, for example, may Allah make it halal. People do it for haram reasons. When you want people to admire, when you want people to, when you want to feel good, actually, we should be doing it for us to feel good in reality. I'm doing it for myself. You know, people say, well, I'm dressing very well. I'm dressing for myself. I'm talking about any one of us. It's not like I'm dressing to show someone and so on. But when we would like people to look at us in, in a good way, and we're neat and presentable. We need to know that on the day of judgment, we also need to be neat and presentable. That presentability is going to be connected to something else, to your closeness to Allah, your religiousness, your spirituality. Whether or not you were determined in the same way you were determined at the gym, determined for your salah, determined to obey Allah's instruction, to abstain from prohibition, and to correct ourselves so that we can develop the good side that I said moments ago, every one of us actually has. I have a good side, you have a good side. But I need to grow it, you need to grow it as well. Develop it. And in that way, we will be able to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, I need to start from now, opening the Quran from today. Number one, I don't know if I'm actually going to witness the beginning of Ramadan. Does anyone here have a guarantee that they're going to be alive to witness the first day of Ramadan? No. If that's the case, I need to say, Allahumma ghfirli dhunubi. Now, 
Right now when we are seated here, I invite you to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, forgive my sins. Oh Allah, I've done so much of wrong. Forgive my sins. Oh Allah, if you take me away, take me away in a condition that you are pleased with me. We've all done wrong, myself included. Kullu bani adam khatta. Every human being commits sins, makes mistakes. But the best of those who constantly make mistakes are those who constantly repent. The best of those who constantly make mistakes are those who constantly repent. Why do we repent? Because we believe in Allah. Someone came to me and told me, well, if I commit a sin and I ask Allah's forgiveness, will he forgive me? I said, yes, indeed, immediately he will. For as long as you're genuine, you're sincere, you've regretted your sin, you're asking Allah's forgiveness and you're promising him you're not going to do it again. He says, what if I fall in it again and again and again and again and again? I told him, if you keep on seeking forgiveness with all the conditions, it's a sign that you believe. Because the disbelievers, they don't want to seek forgiveness. To them, they're doing nothing wrong. For us, there is the element of regret. You do something wrong, you have an element within you saying, I shouldn't have done this, it was bad. What is making you think I shouldn't have done this if it's not your imam? That means there is a flicker. Let's try our best to hold that candle in a way that the wind does not blow it out by quickly engaging in tawbah so that the flame starts growing a little bit more. Subhanallah. You know, you have a candle. Subhanallah. We would not like on a dark night for that candle to be extinguished by the wind. But what we would love definitely is for it to provide light in such a way that we benefit. The same applies to us. Brothers and sisters, no matter what you have done, no matter what you are doing, no matter how many times you have done it, there will come a time in your life, if you have iman, that you will have to quit that bad for the sake of Allah. And that is what will get you into Jannatul Firdaus. That is what will get you into paradise, my brothers and sisters. So I want to give you an example that I gave on Friday at the Jumu'ah that some of the brothers found very, very interesting. Okay? If you and I are expecting a guest at home, a VIP, a person we really wanted to meet coming home, whether they're, okay, I said this before, I'm going to say it again. Whether they're politicians or superstars or soccer players, whoever they are, religious personnel, we would be excited if it's someone we really could not believe is coming to our home. What's the first thing we would do? Clean up. Right or wrong? Clean up. Everyone is helter skelter. Hey, quickly, get this done. Get that done. You paint. You do this. You, you know, make sure we get a new carpet. Make, depending on who the person is. But I'm talking of a v VIP. Subhanallah. Everyone wants to clean up. Clean your mess. And then what? Decorate the house, make it look reasonable, make sure the lights are working, make sure everything's okay. That crack on the glass on the door right in the front, make sure it, the pain is repaired before the guest comes. Not that the guest comes in and then you say, okay guy, have a seat here, we're just painting. <laughs> Subhanallah. No one does that. Have a seat here, we want to fix that glass. My brothers and sisters, we would also go as far as getting clothing that that person would consider decent, reasonable, acceptable and good. So I buy myself a new suit and as it is, you know, the sisters have a, a, a new habit of every function needs a new. Don't pretend like you don't know. Subhanallah. <laughs> a whole new outfit. Everything is new, different. I cannot wear the same thing to two functions in my life. That's an attitude that is void of gratitude. Remember that. You can wear the same thing throughout. No problem. Make a difference. If you can afford it, alhamdulillah, but learn to do something constructive with what you're not wearing. Don't let more than a certain number of pieces of clothing pile up in your wardrobe. Learn to give things away. Because what shaitan does, and I'm diverting a little bit, I'm going to get back to my original story. I'm opening a new window here. You know, we're taught that with the computers. So, subhanallah, your wardrobe, what shaitan does, you know you haven't worn this for so long. Shaitan says, no, leave it. Don't worry, you're going to need this. The next one, yes, you're going to need this. The one 25 years ago when I got married, I'm going to fit into this. Don't worry, it's okay. A day will come. 
Subhanallah. And then the other one, keep this. You know what to do? Even if one day Allah has blessed you to go back into whatever shape you may have been. And I've known of people who've gone into more prim and prop shape than they were the day they got married. Because obviously they started going to the gym and before they didn't. You can sow something else. You can get something else. Learn to give things away. Allah will give you more. Anfiq ya ibn Adam yunfaq alayk. O son of Adam, spend and it shall be spent upon you. Give and you will be given. If you don't give, you're not going to be given. Learn to give. It was difficult for me a few years ago when I opened my wardrobe and I said, time to practice what you've been preaching. Subhanallah. Looked into the wardrobe and saw all these lovely thobes, mashallah. And I said, you know what? We're taking them all out. Give them in a good condition. Many of us wait until there's a hole. There's something wrong with it. The button's missing. Then you say, hey, give this away. And then we go to someone and say, this is brand new, by the way. There's only a button missing. Huh. Only a button missing that rendered it completely useless. According to you, you're giving it to us. When you yourself would not make use of it. The Quran talks of people who do that. And the Quran says it's not a good habit. How can you give something you yourself wouldn't take? So learn to open because Ramadan is a month of generosity. I promise you, my brothers and sisters, the beginning of Ramadan, open your closets, your cupboards, your wardrobes. Not only are we cleansing ourselves, our homes, that guest that I spoke about moments ago, going back to that window, the guest I spoke about moments ago is Ramadan, more important than any human being who can visit you. Just like you will clean your home, clean your act, clean yourself, cut out your bad habits. If you really have that one bad habit, you and I know we have to get rid of whatever it is, whether it is a toxic person on my mobile phone that I'm in touch with, that my spirituality is being rendered useless by. Cut. Cut. There is something called a block on your phone, by the way. Have you used it? No, you haven't. You don't even know where it is sometimes. Use it, it helps. I think I have about 365 blocked persons on my phone. But that's obviously different because you get bombarded everywhere. If you don't give me your name, the next best thing, you're blocked. Because I don't know who you are. You could be someone intending to harm. Possible. I get a message sometimes, Assalamu alaikum. So I've said, Wa alaikum as -salam. I say it. You know, I, and so once in a while, you might type it out if you get a chance. But from 3,000 messages a day, I, ca I cannot just employ myself to Wa alaikum as -salam. Like, Wa alaikum as -salam. Wa alaikum as -salam. to everyone. So I can say it. Wa alaikum as -salam. Then they ask you a question. But you haven't told me who you are, where you're from. You know, it's very dangerous. Subhanallah. Especially nowadays, it could be anyone from anywhere. And then the one brother says, Sheikh, but you must have husnul dhan. You know, you must think good of your brothers. I think very good of you. That's why I blocked you. Subhanallah. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. We think good of our brothers and sisters. My brothers and sisters, my example might be slightly different and even yours. It depends on all of our unique situations. I mean, if you have a business where you're selling uh, something for Ramadan, you don't want to block people who say, Assalamu alaikum. You can just say, Wa alaikum as -salam. The pies are 12 for 5 pounds. Done. <laughs> Subhanallah. By the way, may Allah grant your businesses success. I heard more Ameens from here than anywhere else. <laughs> All the business people are clustered together. So my brothers and sisters, that Ramadan, that month is a guest. It's going to come to us. Don't wait for Ramadan to enter and then you fix the cracked glass and then you want to paint the home. No, before Ramadan, my glass is ready. Before Ramadan, just like my pies and my savories are day one, day two, day three and everything else. I would love also to have a preparation of what I'm going to do, which masjid I'm going to go to, how much Quran I'm going to read, my bad habits right now. I know the one bad habit, I'm going to cut it, quit it for the sake of Allah. The one good thing that I know I have to do, I'm going to strengthen myself to do it for the sake of Allah. Why? Because it's Ramadan, subhanallah. It's Ramadan coming in. I have a request. If every Ramadan we can add one good thing and subtract one bad thing in 20 years, inshallah, we would really improve ourselves. My brothers and sisters, is that asking too much? I only heard one no coming from there somewhere. Subhanallah. Well done, my brother. Mashallah. Mashallah. <laughs> Mashallah. No, it wasn't a sister, Sheikh. Don't worry. But it might have been, the sisters are a little bit softer. In fact, this, all the sisters might have answered, but you know, there's a hijab, Sheikh. So my brothers and sisters, 
It's not much. Let's be serious. We can eradicate our habits. You know, we got here together to feel good about the fact that we're Muslims. We believe in Allah. We believe in the last day. We want to reach out to humanity. We want to reach out firstly to ourselves by getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to. My brothers and sisters, there is no way that we have an option. We are going towards Allah. We're getting closer to death. When I die, I want to have done very nice things for others whom I lived with and for myself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to have improved as the days pass. And this is why we have the gift known as the month of Ramadan. So we will start this month. We will commence this month in a way that we are prepared by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, I spoke about it yesterday in Jum'ah. Again, a very interesting factor. I want to repeat it for the benefit of myself and yourselves. You see, we look at our phones a lot. So now, mashallah, the Muslims, we have a Quran app on our phones, right? But how many of us open that app every single day? Put up your hands. Every single day you have the Quran app opened. Okay, very few hands. Put your hands down, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. May Allah strengthen all those whose hands were down. Mashallah. Amin. Uh, my brothers and sisters, we have WhatsApp. That is probably the most used application on our phones. Do you agree? I heard a loud yes. So now comes the idea where I had told one of the brothers, I said, you know what? We need to introduce an application known as What's Quran? Because the what's is making everyone open things, you know. Every little while, boom, boom. Middle of the night, people are supposed to be asleep. And you know what? In your sleep, you don't even know. It's like default, automatic. Wallahi, the messages of the Quran should reach us in a more powerful way. Every time you pick up your phone, are you prepared to read a verse of the Quran before you read your message on WhatsApp? Are you prepared to do that? Very few yeses. Subhanallah. See that? So anyway, I want to give you good news. That application has been made. It's called Nakhtim. Go and search for it in the Arabic language. Noon, Khata and Meme on Google. What it does for you, something amazing. It has the translation and it has the Arabic. It depends what you want to do. So you pick your phone. When you open your phone during the day, when, before you get into your phone, it asks you to read one verse of the Quran in order. In order, you read one verse of the Quran and then it takes you into your phone. You can do what you want. You pick your phone again, you read one verse of the Quran. The people say that those who are utilizing this application seriously, some of them are completing the whole Quran every 15 days. That's how much they're using of their phones. But that's only if you're serious, subhanallah. And another thing it does for you, it protects you from bad and evil messages. Because imagine I'm reading the Quran, etc., etc. Et and then I open the thing and I'm seeing totally haram messages. It doesn't go together, right? I'll probably delete it, say astaghfirullah, close it again. Sahih, subhanallah. You read a verse saying, tell the believers to lower their gazes. And then you open the thing and, wow, I better lower my gaze. Okay, blow. So that nakhtim is so important, my brothers and sisters. You know what? I think it's about time we thought about such applications and we use them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. May Allah open our doors. I should be back later on by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I hope that every one of us is grateful.